gets it and all my applications just work. There's the dichotomy uh, in a nutshell there. Some people love it, some people hate it. So what is it that people dislike about Windows 8? Where are the sources of frustration? Well, I'm going to go through those uh, one by one here, and I've basically uh, broken the list down into five items. We're going to start with the new Start screen. If you've used Windows for any length of time, you're familiar with the Start menu. The Start menu in Windows 8 is gone completely. It's not there anymore. It's replaced by this bright, bold, maybe too bold, and very colorful start screen. The start screen has these live tiles in it. Uh, each one of those tiles, if you click or tap it on a touch screen, uh, starts a program. Some of these tiles actually provide information about uh, your calendar, about incoming mail messages, about news headlines, and so forth. But instead of going to a traditional menu and scrolling up and down in the menu, you scroll from left to right, as you can see from the scroll bar at the bottom of that screen. That's a shift in the way that things work, uh, and something that's unfamiliar to a lot of people and takes some getting used to. The second item that confuses some people is that, like I said, the Windows desktop is still there. And if you look at this, I've, I've put together a sort of tr traditional looking Windows desktop screen here. You can see there's three tiled windows on there. That's my dog, Mackie, in the window down in the corner there. Um, and it all looks quite familiar except for one thing. There's no start button. The start button is gone. Um, now, there are some other slight differences as well. Uh, the, the transparent look and feel that was introduced with Vista and refined in Windows 7 is gone. So there's a very flat look to all of the elements in the, the new Windows 8 desktop. Um, and if you look in the back there, you can see that there's uh, Windows Explorer is now called File Explorer. And it has the same ribbon that you might be familiar with from uh, Microsoft Office. Uh, but other than that, this is the, the Windows desktop, and once you get there, uh, it, uh, all the programs that you're used to using from the old Windows desktop work just fine in, uh, in the new Windows, except for the absence of that Start button. Now, Windows 8 introduces some new ways of interacting with the user interface. So if you're used to using Windows 7 or Windows Vista or Windows XP, um, your way of interacting with the operating system is with the mouse and keyboard. You click a menu, you double click an icon, you select by dragging the mouse around and so forth. Um, in Windows 8, there are a series of new gestures and uh, you, and, and one of those is to swipe from the right. If you're on a touch screen, that's a fairly easy thing to do. You just take your finger and you swipe in from the right. If you're using a, a non-touch screen PC, you have to move your mouse up into the right corner until this thing called the charms bar appears. And then you move your mouse down and the charms bar uh, materializes on the screen. And then you can click one of those five buttons to make something happen. If you click the settings charm, then you get uh, a, a screen like this, and then you can you can choose change PC settings, and you get this new interface that has these big, bold, touch-friendly controls. Now, once you get used to this, you can learn how to swipe from the right and and go to the upper left corner to change programs, and swipe up from the bottom to get menus. But these are not gestures that anyone who's used Windows for five years or 10 years or 20 years is going to be familiar with. It requires some learning on the part of the user. I mentioned earlier that one of the big changes in Windows 8 is the new app model. Now, to introduce these apps to new customers, new uh, owners of Windows 8 PCs, Microsoft included a selection of 20 Windows 8 apps that come with the operating system. Some of them are absolutely wonderful, in my opinion. Uh, the Weather app is 
just great. The, uh, the news and sports app have uh, excellent information from, uh, from around the world. And uh, in fact, they have an international focus to them so that you can follow your, your favorite teams, whether you follow uh, uh, American football or English football and, and cricket is there. Uh, so you've got a handful of applications of these new apps that are good. But a bunch of them are not that good. They were, they were mediocre and half-baked in the initial release of Windows 8. In particular, the ones that people have complained about the most is the Mail app. And Mail is one of the key things that people want a new computer to do for them in the, in the modern era. And, and the Mail app was, quite frankly, weak. Now, it was updated last month. Um, it fixed some of the missing features in it. But still, if you're used to a full featured mail program like Microsoft Outlook, you'll look at the, this mail app and you'll go, where did all of my favorite features go? Other apps like the Photos app that you see here are missing some key features and they're just difficult to use. And, uh, and the thing that's uh, worst about them for a new user is that they're set as the default so that if you double click on a picture from File Explorer, the new Photos app opens and you go, what do I do next? And that brings up the final complaint that people have about Windows 8 is that you've got this old Windows and this new Windows. And they're not just side by side, they're sometimes now you see them and now you don't. Now I've got an example here that sort of illustrates the problem. Internet Explorer 10 is built into Windows 8, but it comes in two different versions. One is the version that you know from your desktop. That version has uh, tabs. It uh, allows you to use plugins like Silverlight or uh, a password manager such as RoboForm, if that's something that you use. Um, and uh, it has uh, the menus, and you can control your favorites by clicking the star icon. Very, very familiar set of interface controls. But if you click a tile on the start screen in Windows 8 that goes to a web page, it takes you to the new immersive Internet Explorer. And this is the one that I'm showing here. Now, as you can see, there's no window borders. Uh, I've actually swiped down from the top to show you where the tabs are. But if I had just opened that one page, you wouldn't even see the tabs there because they're not visible at all. Uh, you could have as many as 10 tabs open at a time, but you don't see them until you use the secret hidden gesture that makes this, this tabs bar visible. And the address bar is at the bottom of the screen rather than at the top, which is where you're used to seeing it in every other browser that we've used for the last 20 years. And the only plugin that you can use in this immersive Internet Explorer is Adobe Flash. Any other plugins that you use, any kind of ActiveX control simply don't work. So if you find yourself going back and forth between this version of Internet Explorer and the old style version of Internet Explorer, it can be very jarring and confusing especially if 